Hi everyone, I'm Bob Reed, and I'm sorry I can't join you in the workshop session, but um, thanks for the opportunity to record this video, uh, which is a commentary over the slides that I would have used if I'd been able to join you. You may recall I recorded another video for you about using digital technology to embed support with English and Maths. In this uh, second video, I'm just going to look at um, some other key strategies that cover both English and Maths. I'm going to focus principally on uh, uh, developing English skills, looking at um, three strategies to develop reading. They are explicit modelling, adapting materials and using graphic organisers. The fourth strategy is a maths support strategy and um, uh, looks at a common um, sequence of stages in problem solving called three-stage problem solving. The first strategy I'd like to talk about is how you can um, support with support reading skills um, whenever you introduce what's likely to be an unfamiliar type of text. Here is like a product label and um, one of the key things to do is when you introduce an unfamiliar text of this sort is either before you introduce it or as you share the text with your learners always ask learners what the purpose of the text is. Why would they bother to read it? Um, this is a key question they'll have to answer in their functional English um, uh, papers and it's a really good starting point um, uh, when you tackle any kind of unfamiliar text. Um, if it is an unfamiliar text for them they, they'll lack confidence in knowing uh, where to look first. Um, so it could be that when you look at a product label of this sort that you, as a professional in your area, have a particular um, uh, focus, you would know where to look first. It could be, for example, that you might want to check whether this product is still in date. So you might, there could be particular areas, uh, headings that you look at first um, in order to gather the information that you want to uh, gain from uh, this set of instructions. There could be parts of the text that you read in, in detail that are really important. So it's actually sharing the kind of reading practices that you as a specialist in this area would use when you um, would read this kind of text uh, in, a, in a vocational area. Um, there could be information about um, usage rates or health and safety issues that, um, that you would want to quickly check. So there could be particular headings like uh, storage, health and safety um, that you would look for uh, and which, would you, which you would use to navigate your way around that, that text. There could be bits of key terminology that you would want to highlight. Um, gauging water, aggregates, embedded metal, um, reconstitute, impervious. There could be bits of term terminology there that you might want to pre-teach. You may want to highlight those before you uh, look at the text. So this idea of just modelling the kind of reading practices that you would use uh, with a particular text is very straightforward but a very powerful way in which you can introduce learners to unfamiliar texts. In a similar way you might uh, have opportunities to highlight uh, maths, mathematical information in the text that you would look for uh, like uh, the use by date, um, uh, information about um, how long it would take to use the product or wait for it to, to go off. There could be some uh, abbreviations there that you might want to highlight. And actually uh, just sharing your own uh, practical knowledge of how much of the product you would use, estimating how long it might last. So this idea of modelling uh, is a very straightforward, very useful strategy to use when you're introducing a new text that contains um, maths information. In a similar way, when you introduce new building, uh, um, a, a technical document of this sort, there could be, again, 
what kind of information would you want to get out of this quickly? Are there particular bits of the text that you would look at first? Um, particular bits of terminology or abbreviations or types of measurement? In a similar way, if you give your learners uh, a research project of some sort where they've got to go off and research on the internet, um, don't forget to often um, model how you would yourself navigate this uh, website. Um, it's a myth that learners uh, our learners are very confident in using uh, all types of um, ed tech uh, searching the internet. Often they are particularly good at using a particular um, social media channel like um, Facebook or um, Snapchat, but actually using the internet for uh, a practical purpose learners often can benefit from uh, you modeling how you yourself would find information um, on this web page by clicking on a particular heading or a drop down uh, menu so modeling um, your uh, professional reading skills is a key embedded support strategy uh, the other area I wanted to look at was uh, adapting uh, vocational materials so here are some slides that I often use here's the original text about protecting new brickwork and here's a simplified version so um, what I'd normally do is to talk a little bit about how you could um, adapt your material from uh, to make it easier for learners to access so and I normally would cover three areas one is looking at how that um, simplified version um, shows good practice in organizing and setting out those uh, ideas grouping the information under headings um, a good use of spacing use of graphics it could be sentence structure you shorten the sentences uh, perhaps use slightly more everyday connectives uh, rather than the more um, formal ones that are used in the original text. Um, a key point for me is actually thinking about essential technical terms that you need to retain in the text in order for it to have a professional um, uh, feel to it. Things like efflorescence or leaching, those bits of vocabulary you need to keep in there. So adapting a vocational text in that way according to its structure sentence structure or vocabulary is good practice in teaching and learning anyway but it's a key support strategy in order to ensure that reading materials are accessible the third area that I wanted to look at is using graphic organizers and it could be that you actually want your learners to be able to read technical text like that in which case you might be able to use a graphic organizer like this which involves asking your learners to read perhaps work in pairs or in groups to read that text but telling them to look for the single cause that's explained in that first paragraph and then quickly making notes on the three effects um, that are outlined in that first paragraph with respect to the second paragraph you could get them to complete a little table that um, prompts them to look for two different methods of protecting new brickwork and then making brief notes on those two methods so this idea of getting learners uh, giving learners a, a, a kind of graphic organizer prompts them to look for structure within a text look for the key um, ideas in it and begin to organize them uh, helps them with reading skills but also is a good strategy to develop note-taking skills as well so there are different types of graphic organizer you could use overlapping uh, you could use a Venn diagram to do a compare and contrast what's how are two products similar how are they different it could be that you could get learners to reconstruct a text in a sequencing format here's an example of uh, another type of graphic organizer this is a, a piece of text about different types of bricks and you could get your learners to use some 
um, highlighter pens to highlight different types of information, um, the name of the brick, its details about its appearance, how it's used and other qualities. So it, that's a good active learning task where they have to uh, mark the text and begin to identify different types of information in the text. And then they could repackage that information uh, in a simple table format like this. So um, using graphic organizers of this sort is a great way to get learners to look for structure and ideas within a text and also supports them with note taking. The last strategy I wanted to look at is three stage problem solving which is a strategy commonly used in functional maths programs and is another opportunity for you to share your um, practical application, your skills and expertise in using math skills within a practical context. Let me look at a very simple example just to give you an idea of this strategy. Ten people need a taxi, one taxi can take four people, how many taxis are needed? Well, this is a very simplistic example I know but it could be uh, quite useful to clarify the three stages. We need to decide what we're going to do first of all um, and we could either divide 10 by 4 or we could uh, count on in fours. We then actually do the number crunching um, and then finally we have to kind of make sense of the answer in a, in a realistic way. Um, an alternative option would be to kind of think well perhaps we need taxis that hold more um, people so we might want two lots of taxis so the idea is that there are these three stages deciding what to do what kind of information we need actually doing the number crunching either by a written method or mental methods and then actually using a sense of realism and um, uh, coming to a, a, a practical conclusion so those are the three stages, deciding what to do, carry out the calculation and then making sense of the answer and modelling a kind of checking method um, as well. Um, so this three stage problem solving is a really useful one to consider within a vocational area because it gives you an opportunity to kind of share your numeracy practices with your learners because you're the kind of people who know best how to use maths within practical contexts. And it, it could be that there are times when you need to focus more on the kind of information they need to find, helping them to decide whether they've got to multiply or divide. There could be particular mental methods, quick tips and techniques that they could use and actually working using the math skills, using a three, four, five triangle uh, to set out a brick pier, working out how many courses of bricks they would might need to uh, uh, use and actually making sense of the answer. So there are plenty of opportunities for you to demonstrate your own practical skills and expertise in maths. A little example just to finish off um, this first stage of just identifying what information is needed, um, gathering that together, actually doing the number crunching, uh, using a calculator, uh, interpreting the answer and then thinking very realistically about what that answer means in terms of practical um, uh, a practical solution to the problem. So that's the three stage problem solving strategy I wanted to share with you and those that slide sums up the th four different strategies that I've looked at. Really modeling um, the kind of professional reading strategies that you would use um, with different types of texts, whether it's written texts, product labels, web pages, adapting materials in, in different ways. Uh, perhaps you don't have time to adapt the materials, in which case perhaps there's a type of graphic organizer that you could use that could support learners to work in pairs or in groups to look for structure and ideas within a text and repackage that those ideas in a different format. And then lastly, I've just looked at three stage problem solving. If you want to find out more about embedded support, uh, there's a, a, sh a one day course you can um, attend the vocational revitalizer course. 
I'm the Education Training Foundation's Regional Specialist Lead for Maths and English and I could arrange um, uh, for those courses to be set up for you and actually if you wanted me to run one of those courses I could do that for you. I hope that's been uh, a useful um, video, uh, a whistle-stop tour of four key embedded support strategies. Here are my contact details, which Keith will also have uh, with him in the workshop. I hope that's been useful.